Hey folks, today we're making a Teensy Arcade Synth. It's a three-layer polyphonic synthesizer powered by a Teensy. We'll build the box, demo some presets, I'll discuss some lessons learned along the way. It's going to be a lot of fun. Maybe. Let's get started. First, let's go over what all we'll need for the build. I'll be using the Teensy 4.0 board. Teensy is similar to Arduino and other microcontrollers, but it excels in audio applications. Teensy 4.1 has the additional capability of adding a USB cable for MIDI control, but for this project, we'll be playing the instrument with our arcade buttons. The other board we'll be using for this is the Teensy Audio Adapter Board. This, as I learned later, is actually an optional component for this build. With the audio adapter, you can easily attach stereo headphones, output audio at CD quality, playback sounds from an SD card, and much more that you can read about on PJRC's website. If you want the audio played through a line out, I'd say get this, but otherwise you can play the audio over USB in your DAW. We'll be using a breadboard to keep this build solderless. This will also allow us to move our Teensy from one project to the next. Moving on, we have an I2C LCD display for showing information about our synth presets and parameter values, and a rotary encoder to help us navigate through the synth's menus. It can be turned endlessly left or right and can be pressed as a button. Between the rotary encoder and LCD screen, we gain access to a wide range of controls with limited wiring. We'll also need some wires for connecting everything. The ground pins for all the arcade buttons will be connected with a daisy chain cable I've made, and the other pins will be connected to the Teensy using the male pin to a female arcade connector. If you're gonna be making these types of projects, getting a cheap pair of wire crimpers, some wire, and some pin heads will go a long way. To cut the holes in the box, we'll need a Forstner bit and a set of arcade buttons to fill said holes. Probably goes without saying at this point, but links to everything will be in the description. These buttons aren't pressure sensitive like keyboard keys, but they're freaking arcade buttons. And finally, we'll need a box to put it all in. I'm using a cigar box from a lot I picked up a while ago. Before I start building anything, I like to build the circuit with a breadboard with a minimal sketch to make sure that everything is working. For this initial circuit, I wanted to make sure that we had sound and we could get the encoder and LCD connected for two-way communication with the Teensy. <laughs> The next step is to lay out where we want all of our components to live. After roughly laying out the design, I like to use graph paper to line everything up and poke pilot holes. Then with a little TV magic, we have our box. Okay, it isn't actually magic, spoilers. I drilled some holes like before and used a jigsaw to cut out the LCD window. If you use a guide, you can get straighter cuts with the jigsaw, but honestly, I've never had luck with precise cuts with the jigsaw. But oh well, if things get janky, just cover it up with some cardboard and move on with your life, man. In the end, I think it turned out pretty good. There are only eight buttons, which serves as a nice creative constraint, and the encoder and LCD give us access to everything we need. The important thing is now we have a sturdy hardware platform for interfacing with our synth software. Almost. First, we need to rebuild the circuit. Using the audio adapter board proved to be challenging for getting everything wired up on these tiny breadboards, even with having them cut in half. Again, if you're just using audio over USB, you don't really need this audio adapter board. You'll have a lot more room for wiring things up on the breadboard, and you'll have access to more input pins since they aren't being used by the adapter board. This is all stuff that future me learned. Past me made these mistakes, and now future me is telling present you how to avoid them. Unless you're watching this in the future, it took some trial and error to get everything wired up correctly since I had assumed that you could use the same input pins as the standalone Teensy board, and this is how it turned out. I'll have this diagram and the code for the project up on GitHub. I made a hole in the back to feed the power cable through, and I made it large enough to fit the audio cable to, if you end up using an audio cable. Now with everything wired up, we can confirm that it's all working. Sweet. Now that the hardware is complete, it's time to write our Teensy script. 
This is the audio system design tool for Teensy Audio Library where you can lay out the nodes and connections for various audio components like waveforms, envelopes, filters, mixers, etc. that can all be chained together. I use this as a starting point for writing my Teensy script in the Arduino IDE. I'll link to instructions on how to set up Arduino for installing to the Teensy. Once you're able to install code to your Teensy in Arduino, you shouldn't have any problems running this code. Basically in our script, we are setting up our audio chain defining parameters that we can get and set for our audio components and organizing it all in a menu system that uses a single click to select and a double click to go back. Now we're ready to install our final build. At some point I realized that the synth would work just using the Teensy board by itself, but now we have it wired up so that it can work with either option. So here's a quick tour of the synth. Our menu has presets, three separate oscillators, envelopes, a low pass filter, and octave, transpose, and scale options for the keys. A single click will select an option and a double click will return to the previous menu. Inside our oscillator menu, we can set various controls, including the waveform for that voice. Now let's hear some presets. For this initial release, I've made 10 presets, but I'd love to see more added in the future. If we navigate to our scale option, we can change the target notes for our buttons from a major to a minor scale. And that's it. I still can't believe it's possible to build a professional sounding synth with just these few components. I'm pretty stoked about it honestly because building your own synth is kind of one of those bucket list projects for any tinkerer. But I want to know what you think down in the comments. Check out the project on GitHub and if you feel like adding some of your own presets then feel free to submit them in a pull request. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.